the three of us are trying to figure out exactly what is Elias Pettersson as a player. Like, what is his, what's the top end? Where is his ceiling? Do you well, see him as a 40-goal guy? Is he at 35? Yes. And 35, I th- I think is he, he a 75-point guy, 80-point guy? I think he like, can be more than that as well. I, I think your numbers, they're, they're a little bit deceiving because last year he had 66 points in 68 games. That wasn't a full season, correct. as we know. So, That's what I, I was saying, yeah. Yes, and if we're going to extrapolate that, and even his rookie year, he missed 11 games. So he had 66 yeah, he and 71. 71. He's got 153 games on 106 or 153 points on 165 career games. So under a point right. a game, but not substantially under a point a game. Like he's a really right. good player as a young player to be in that that stratosphere means he is growing into something. He has shown at his height, again, this is a guy he brings superstar um I guess caliber and also marketability with him too, which again, I don't know if the team's going to care so much about that on the GM level, the owner will and should. And I think his agent probably comes to the table on that. I think agents throughout the league have also, they've changed their tune. Like it wasn't long ago where this, this is kind of what Mark Shifley was putting up with or putting up, you know, Shifley, maybe not quite as, as substantial, didn't win rookie of the year. But the point being is, at that point, it was like, well, we'll pay you based on this as opposed to what you're going to become. Nathan McKinnon, the same thing. Even Drysaddle, right. to an extent. Drysaddle wasn't no, putting right. up 100 points, and it was he got an unbelievable deal for Edmonton because they're like, hey, you're young and you haven't done this. I think the agents, and it really started in Toronto. It started in Toronto. I think the rest of the league is, has has woken has has become aware of this anyway, where they're like, I don't care what we did three years ago. You're paying me because this is what it's going to become. And right. that doesn't mean the team's going to definitely do it. The team can do whatever they want as well. And Patterson and Hughes, they're both going to be restricted free agents. So there's only so much power they can have. But Nylander was a restricted free agent. He sat in Sweden until right. they gave him what he wanted. Uh, Marner was restricted. He got the second right. largest contract in the league for a winger. You know, it, the game has changed. Right. And – I think based on what you're saying, Noodles, I don't think you're wrong. It's probably I, I, more of a reasonable quote-unquote deal. But I'll bet you Pedersen goes and, and says, I don't care about reasonable. I'm telling you what I'm going to be, right. and I want to be paid like that. I understand And that. he has the I leverage just, of saying when they start the hockey season without him, the fans are going to say, what the hell are we going to do without Pedersen? What the I, hell are we going to do without Quinn Hughes? I, I understand leverage. that. I just I think you, you – and, and you know what? You're only worth – what somebody's willing to pay you mm-hmm. at that point too, and his value to the Vancouver Canucks. We've said it all along, and we might as well be consistent. In Toronto, Mitch Marner said, "I want to be close to 34. Yeah, I want to be close. You know, 91 sign there. Like they were doing their internal, uh, I guess, comparisons against each other, not against the rest of the league, because we were going, hold on a second here, Pasternak's at this, and Marner, you know, yep. like Nylander, like it was." And that's probably how it's going to unfold in Vancouver. But I struggle when I think of Pedersen, and I watch Vancouver as much as anybody. And, and, you know, Ray could weigh in on it when we talk to him as well. But I always – I try to identify what he is going to be as a player when he hits his ceiling. Because we talk about it every night. In this Canadian division – It's in Edmonton, it's in Toronto, it's in Winnipeg when you're looking down strength down the middle. Now, in Vancouver, it's going to be Patterson and Horvat if Patterson gets locked up. And those are nice players, but where would you rank those duos if you had to do it? Well, they're fourth in the country right now. Right, exactly. They're absolutely fourth. And and that's that's my point. So if if you're doing it against your peers or if you're doing it in your team, like the comparisons, it'll be – very interesting to where they fall. Yeah, it's going to be a fun case study. It, it is going right, to be fun. The, and I think the, my understanding is from afar, a lot of the issue from people in Vancouver is that you're you're making sure everything else gets done. You're, you're spending all your money, and then you're in a crunch when the big boys come right. up. Because regardless of what they project to be, the fact is if that team's going to get to where they want to get to, Patterson's yeah. got to likely be their best forward. Quinn Hughes is going to be their best defenseman. And yep. – if you've locked up guys like Pearson, like Beagle, you got Roussel, Demko, you got Eric. Got the goalie locked up. Demko is a good deal. And that's a step that's yeah. a that's a different position and a and Very as important. Deal. Like if Demko's your number one, he's as important as as important, if not more, than your number one center, number one defenseman. But I, right. I think you look at the way Jim Benning 
and the Canucks have operated. They splash money around on third line this, third pairing this. You know, backup goalie, even Holpe's got a pretty decent ticket for another year. I think $4 million for yeah, another four year. Yeah, and a half. Four and a four half, and a half yeah. for another year. And it's like, well, what if Pedersen goes, I don't want a bridge, and I'm not signing for six and a half? What the hell are you going to do? Right. <laughs> like, what is Benning going to do if he doesn't have the money? Like, unless you're going to yeah. start shipping guys overboard. But then it's like, who are you going to ship overboard? Why did the why did you sign Pearson? Like, maybe you had yeah. to let him go because you knew you were <laughs> going to be in the spot. That's what everybody's saying. There's like, some money locked up here, and then you go and give that money. What if that's wow. the difference between these two guys getting done? Well, but he, here's the thing. I, I would say I would I have no problem with the Pearson deal. It's just the problem is, like you pointed out, oh, is there's other deals there that it started to shine a light on. Now he has to find a way to get rid of one of those deals or two. Expansion's coming. He may have to package something up with a, with a draft pick to make one of those deals go away. Ray, we were talking about the Pearson signing out in Vancouver, followed up by how are they going to handle the Pedersen and Hughes contracts. Like, how's... How's our boy Jimmy Benning going to handle all this out there first on the Pearson signing? Well, I, I don't get it. I mean, I, I don't I, – Tanner Pearson's an NHL player. He's a legit guy. Um, did you need to sign him for three years and 3.75 or 3.25 million, I think, is, is the number? Did you really need to do that? Because <laughs> right now they have – they're going to have uh, roughly about $17 million in cap space and uh, left. And they have to sign Pedersen, sign Hughes, uh, determine whether they're going to bridge them or sign them long term. If they sign them long term, well, that's going to blow through all of that or pretty much all of that cap money. You still need to put a team together. They don't have, you know, Benning said yesterday or maybe it was this morning, I don't foresee any cap problems. He must have a different calculator than, <laughs> than most people are looking at. I love that. Don't foresee it. It's only my cap, yeah. but I don't. And they're getting the Stamkos and Subban. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so, actually, so, don't, so just think of this, though, guys. So, Sven Berchi, he signed to a three-year deal at about three and a half million dollars. He's you've barely seen him. He signed Sam Gagne to three years at three million dollars, and then decided they didn't need him either. Um, uh, Louis Erickson, six years and thirty-six million dollars. Beagle and Roussel were three years and twelve million dollars. This is all money sitting like an, a bad meal in your gut on their cap. It's all on their tenure. And then he comes out two weeks ago, and I know well, maybe I'm critical all the time of this, but I live here. I see it every day. And he says, we need two more years. You've already had seven. You've, that's like being, you know, you're in the league for seven years. You score four goals a year, and you go and you tell the GM, you give me two more years, and I'll get you 20. Or like six. eventually, does there not have to be like, hey, wait a minute, we're spending tens of millions of dollars here for what? And that doesn't count Tyler Myers' deal, who's had a pretty good year, but they, you know, they free agent spent on him. That's a lot. Brandon Sutter's a serviceable player. He went most of this year without an assist, which isn't a problem, except he's a centerman. Yeah, right. And that's uh, guys, part of the it's job. A, it, I don't think the people out here quite realize the straits that they're in. I, I don't, I don't <laughs> quite, I don't think they quite get it. Because Ray, Travis we were... has done a hell of a job with a team that's undermanned, making them as competitive as they've been over the last couple of years. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. Ray, we were, we were talking about Patterson in particular um, last hour, and I was trying to be, I guess just think about what he is as a player and what his contract would look like because, um, you know, he's got 66 points two years in a row. Now, Hayes pointed out those are prorated because of 71 games and 68 games. But what do you see him as when he reaches his peak as a player? Because he's 22 and he's still got a long road. But I, I just... I don't see him as a Marner. I don't see him as a superstar. I think he's just a really a great player. I don't see him as an elite player. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I, I'm trying to figure out because he's a guy that I really struggle to assess as a player. Um, I, I was pretty um, 
I was pretty disappointed in uh, how he was able to play this year. Now, he had, I don't know the number, I knew it when the Canucks were playing, but he's hit seven or nine goal posts this year or something crazy like that. So his yeah. number could easily, in a good year, would look a lot different. I think he, sh- he should be more than 70 points a season, but I don't think he's 95 points a season. Right. Certainly not with the roster that, you know, of guys around him. So I'm, I think he's a number one center. But I don't think he's, uh, you know, he's not an Austin Matthews. He's not a, a Connor McDavid. He's, you know, he's not a Mark Shifley, in my opinion, although right. he may end up in the same point range as Shifley does in some years. I, I think he's a really good player. Mm-hmm. I just, yeah. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have him in that upper echelon of guys that I, I probably did earlier in, or, you know, like in last summer or whenever – after the last year, whatever, I probably had him there in my mind. I don't right now. I, I just was, uh, I was comparing him, not the same type of player, but I was looking at like the Barzell deal, like a bridge, a three year at seven, something like that, because we were trying to figure out, like, I don't think he's a double digit player right now. I, you oh, know, you mean 10 million bucks? Yeah, no. That, oh, that's, boy, no. No, no. That's what I, I, I mean, we, when I say no, no, I mean, like, for me. Like, right. For, if I'm signing the check, no chance. Here's the, here's the, here's the cool little hook to this: is both Pedersen and Hughes are represented by J.P. Barry. So okay. you negotiate with one, you're really kind of negotiating with two. I mean, not that one. Oh, I'm not signing because you can't sign this guy, but I don't think it gets easier because Barry's sitting in the middle of both of them. Yeah, I mean, we, we were discussing that earlier in terms of what you're asking for, what you're looking for. I, I have a similar mindset of, uh, as you do based on how bad this season has gone for him. I mean, I think everyone can concede, Pedersen included, this is a complete write-off of a year. Like, he's barely played, and when he did, he really didn't play that well based on his standards. Now, do you mean the team or him? I'm talking Pedersen. Mm-hmm. Pedersen yeah, okay. alone yeah. is a complete write Clearly, for the team, too. I mean, he's a microcosm of the team, but – him alone on a platform year. This is this is the worst year of his career. Uh, so that might affect the the negotiations, and it certainly will from Vancouver. I'm sure if you're betting, you're like, listen, I'm paying you based on what you did this year too. But the but, game but has you changed. You know what, Brian? I would say this. I don't know how you guys were, Jamie and and O, oh, but when I was in the last year of my contract, I, I didn't like it. I, I felt like everything was. I didn't score for three go three games, and I'm like, oh, I'm never going to get paid. Like, I would panic. Maybe he's like that. I don't know. Some guys have those career years. I tended to have mine right after I signed, like an idiot. I had just <laughs> signed, and then I'd have this 40 goals. Yeah, great. You just signed for three years, you dumb dumb. Yeah. Happened twice. <laughs> yeah, right after you signed. Mr. Security, man, you're a great player when you got that security. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was real bright. I don't know how you guys were, but maybe that's something that – has you know got into his head early because he started poorly he started really poorly and then yeah. it kind of got re- you know he was stuck for a long time 